Welcome back to the Roadshow this morning in the Buzz. Many of the ladies in our audience will recognize our next guest <laughs> from ladies. Sex in the City. <laughs> All right, but Craig Gass has quite the resume working on everything from Family Guy to King of Queens. He joins us this morning on the Roadshow with a Kansas City Royal hat on. And no Can you believe that? What is going on? I know, I know. It was a free hat. I performed in Kansas City last week, and looking at my hair this morning, I thought, you know, I'll just throw on the free hat. So <laughs> we'll, give you, we'll get you a Roadshow hat. Oh, All right, cool. Right, All right, I'll get a Roadshow hat. You can That's change fine. it out. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So you're a busy guy. You work on all these. Talk about some of the shows you work yeah, on. Yeah, tell people aside from Sex in the City, which I saw the episode. Yeah, yeah. But tell, tell Sex in the City was disgusting, and I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> and uh, on King of Queens, I was the new guy at Kevin James's work. But now I have the coolest job in the world. I am doing voices on Family Guy. American Dad and the Cleveland Show, That's and they awesome. discovered me on YouTube. Oh, get out! How did that yeah. happen? It was uh, the casting director, Linda, saw me on YouTube, and she called Seth MacFarlane and said, "You got to hear this guy." He, Seth was in his car, and she said, "You got to hear these clips." She played the clips over the phone, and in his car, listening to the <laughs> computer clips, she said, "Hire him. Let's get him on the show." I love that. And um, a week later, I'm in a recording studio with Seth MacFarlane. And I just was recording one line. He did one line as Peter Griffin where he said, This is crazier than when Al Pacino was a slumlord laundromat tenant. <laughs> and then they cut to me as Al Pacino in the middle of a bunch of broken down washers and dryers going, You're out of order. And you're out of order. And you're out of order. And I did it three times and I go, uh, so how was that? And he goes, uh, oh, that was great, man. That was great. So I think we're done. And I go, all right. Do you want to hang out? And he goes, no, I got to work. All right. You want me to get out of here? And he goes, yeah, please get the hell out of here. Like, all right. I got up and I walked out. Well, let's talk about how you picked up on all these uh, these impersonations you do because your entire family growing up was deaf yes. and you watch TV yeah. and that's how you learn how to speak. Yeah. And that's not a joke. That so. Don't think I'm kidding with that. My mom, my dad, and my sister are all completely deaf. So growing up in that family, I couldn't learn how to talk from my own family. I learned how to talk by copying all the voices I heard on TV. And and I grew up in the Bronx. Yeah, people would, with that <laughs> Casey yeah. hat on yeah, yeah, and yeah. the lack yeah. of an, a Bronx accent, yeah. you know, people would never know. And everyone in my neighborhood sounded like, you know who Tracy Morgan is, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Everybody in the Bronx <laughs> talk like this. Whether you black or white, male or female, that's crazy. Hey, this is the voice of your next door neighbor, and I'm a Vietnamese girl. Hey, this is the voice of your mailman, and I'm a tranny. That's crazy. So, yeah, I never got that accent. Right. But the weirder the voice, the easier it is for me to do it. Like Christopher Walken has a real stop and go kind of voice where he'll talk every once in a while, he'll stop, and then he'll keep going. Or, uh, you know, Al Pacino, going, yeah. which is all the way down here. That's a fun one. Or Tom Arnold, who, uh, I love painkillers and, uh, and I need to call my sponsor. Or uh, Adam Sandler, who's, uh, who's uh, really fun and likes to do jokes like, uh, what kind of a bee makes milk? A booby. Shibby doo. Hee hoo. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, Scooby Doo. Yeah, wow. Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But yeah, it's, uh, the whole show that I'm doing at the Comedy Connection this weekend, it's all. Uh, you know, voices and then stories about the celebrities who've tried to meet me because I do an impression of them. Oh, nice. and, How uh, does that who, go? Yeah, who's, who's been, like, who's been pissed off? <laughs> right. You know what? I'm glad you said that because it was Christopher Walken. I, was I, it had, really? I had dinner with Christopher Walken and um, what was his name? Richard Belzer. Kept oh, trying yeah, to do yeah, me, yeah, yeah. trying to keep getting me to do my Christopher Walken impression for Walken. He goes, come on, do it, do it. And I go, all right, I don't even know if this sounds good or not, but what I try to do is I try to I sound... I feel uncomfortable and he's not here. As I weird know. as possible, and then I say the word cowbell, and Walken was staring at me... <laughs> <laughs> Walken was staring at me with his, his steak <laughs> back in his hand, he goes... Wow. And then he went back to his thing. <laughs> but, was he, but he was he really annoyed? He was really annoyed. But it was because Belzer kept trying to get me to do impressions for him, so he didn't want to hear it. Yeah, so. you got to feel out your audience. you got to oh, know your man. audience. Yeah, right? he, and Christopher Walken. Who, not loved, my loved, it? <laughs> not your demo. You yeah. Who loved it, though? Who was like, this is the greatest thing that sounds just like me? Uh, Tom Arnold actually said That's to me, good, yeah. uh, he goes, uh, you know what? Uh, no one's ever done an impression of me, and nobody's ever cared, <laughs> because, uh, you know, I've been in movies like True Lies and The Stupids, but the funniest thing I've ever ever been in was Roseanne. So I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you did that for me. And uh, so he was very appreciative that somebody actually cared enough to do an impression. Yeah, so. that is really cool. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, enjoy your uh, time here in Rhode Island. I can't wait. Well, and connection. I have to say, it's, it's, a, it's a great value because you get that many celebrities in, one, in one package. And you know what? It's the first club that ever booked me 10 years ago. So it's always like a homecoming for whenever cool. I come back there. Nice. So the Comedy Connection and it's 
RIComedyConnection.com. We are we are very familiar with it around here, and, right. our, and our audience members will be too. And actually, if you want ticket info on Craig's performances at the Comedy Connection, all you have to do is head over to FoxProvidence.com. And speaking of FoxProvidence.com, let's head over to Melissa in the Tech Center. Hey, Mel. That's hey. crazy. <laughs> We're having a great time here in the New England Tech Center, and Craig, welcome. We're excited to have you here on this show, and hopefully some of our blogger fans and Facebook friends are able to see the show as well as some of us. But I'm here in the New England Tech Center, live blogging on foxprovidence.com, and we're talking about Craig Gass this morning and what makes people laugh. Smokey Wolves is my husband. makes me laugh every day, but I do have a few favorite comedians. And Joe A. says, the politicians make me laugh the way they bend the truth. Ouch. And Lisa says, yeah, my husband makes me laugh, too. So do my kids, especially my son, Adam. He's the funny one. And in case you're just joining us this morning, I posted today's buzz poll question on our homepage, foxprovidence.com. Today, we're asking, what makes you laugh? Your choices are A, funny impersonations, B, observational humor, or C, risk, risk jokes. So... Uh, a lot of our Facebook friends are weighing in as well. And if you'd like, you can join us on our Facebook page. Donna Stanley says, I think you can find humor in everything and anything. It helps relieve stress. Sometimes life gets too serious. And I definitely agree, Donna. So I'll be back at the end of the show with your web poll results. But for now, let's...